Hi guys and welcome to another kit review. All right, so today we're having a look at a quite an old kit. So this kit came out in 1993. It is from Dragon and it is from their 148 scale master series. It is a big A 349A Nata with launch tower. Okay, so like I said, 1993. So it is an old one. This is the initial release. It has been re-released several times since then, but this is number one in the thing. So as you can see, turn it sideways. It is a Bakem Nata with the launch tower. So this is the proposed launch tower for the vehicle it was a basically a wooden pole with um, side supports and uh, she was supposed to be released from that straight up okay so being a wooden pole even if it got damaged in an air raid you could quite easily replace it that was the thinking of the time okay so this is i would say this is be a a drawing board kit but not really so these aircraft did exist they had several of them uh, almost operational at the end of the war and even as the allies approached they did actually hook these up to trucks and trailers and try to get them out of the way i believe three of these were found in a field three or possibly four in Austria I think it was or somewhere around about there anyway enough of me prattling here we see the aircraft fully loaded with rockets in the nose just taking off there's another one in the background just about to be serviced strangely enough the trucks look almost American but that is cool wagon so they are Germans okay so that's the box top Let's have a look at the sides. Okay, so on the sides, we've got basic um, history of the aircraft in six languages. Japanese, English, German, French, Italian, Chinese. Some very small writing for warnings, etc, etc. In uh, English. And on the other side we have uh, I would say almost photos of the actual kit they look like they've been touched up photoshopped so to speak in the early way so as you can see this is the natter this is the launch pole that's the launch mechanism down the bottom and there's the aircraft itself and it does have photo edge parts included in this and there we go dragon's address in hong kong new territories 1993 okay so i believe there is a, a another natter kit out which has a full launch tower which is what they use for the test flights but this is an operational one okay so let's have a look in the box it's all right so this one again as usual most of my kits come off internet auction sites you know which one i'm talking about and so i pick them up as bargains which is the best way to pick up older kits all right so instructions we'll have a look at those in shortly first bag out the aircraft itself second bag out a base plus what looks to be the launch mechanisms I think that's interesting and last bag out not last bag out sorry this is the launch pole some very nice detail on it and a ladder this thing's going to be quite tall okay and then we have oh, photo edge decals and a piece of string so this launch tower did have pulley system on it 
which is how the whole system worked so luckily they've included the string i like that and the last one is the cockpit and the nose which was clear perspex dropped off rockets came out shot down bombers that's it okay so that's what's in the box in a second as usual we'll have a look at the instructions okay instructions so again brief history of the aircraft so quite a few people seem to think that or i guess they don't realize that yes we've heard we've all heard about the first test pilot who was killed in a launch of the aircraft the reason for that was the actual canopy wasn't latched properly and the pilot's headrest actually was fixed to the canopy so when the canopy flew back during launch the headrest hit the pilot in the back of the head so either he was rendered unconscious or the um, investig German investigators after the crash surmised that he was actually killed outright when the headrest broke his neck so that's why the aircraft continued to go up it then turned on its back and can continued flying I think it was a 30 degree angle until it crashed into the ground that wasn't the end of the program though because even after that they did had more volunteers who did conduct actual manned flight which was successful and in fact this aircraft was deemed um, aerodynamically quite good in flight okay it flew really well it glided really well um, most unusually it was last thing in the war so not many continued on after that they did have I think 10 that were ready for combat testing at the very end of the war and these are the ones that they tried to spirit away from the oncoming allies unsuccessfully but they were never used in combat um, whether it would have made any difference that late in the war probably not anyway let's have a look at the instructions so first up ah, sprue layout on the back as you can see you've got two three four five six sprues plus a piece of thread that's all you have in this fairly simple construction not much to this aircraft okay this is how you apply the decals in several languages um, we're all pretty pretty much good on that I think so let's have a look at how you build this thing as usual dragons um, color charts are very limited they do have an Italeri paint number so dragon and Italeri do cooperate and have cooperated um, I have a couple of Fock 190s one by dragon one by Italeri they're basically the same dragon kit okay so Gunsanyo Accuous Hobby Color or Mr. Color you've got two four six eight ten eleven colors in all okay so not much in the way of coloring for this aircraft so let's have a look and see what we've got first up constructing the front of the aircraft so this aircraft was all wood and it was designed to come apart in flight after it had done its mission and then parachute back to earth and the parish and the pilot would parachute back to earth and then they'd put it all back together again and shoot him back up in space again no <laughs> that would have been a wild ride okay so as you can tell cockpit nose okay details are going in the cockpit so front wings back part rocket engine okay nose cone alternate parts tail 
So fairly straightforward construction for this aircraft. Cockpit goes on. Rocket boosters on the side. Okay, so like I said, fairly simplified. You can either have it cockpit open or closed. And then we get to the launch rail, which is basically like a telephone pole with climbing angles on it. So you make up four pieces of that. It goes together. This is your base with pulley system on it. Fairly simple, straightforward. Connects to the launching rail. And there you have it. Top of the launching rail. So all the angle bits, the small angle bits, are basically for the wing supports that run parallel to the main launch pole. Okay, fairly straightforward, pretty easy construction. And then you get a base. So you've got a two-part base with a swivel on it. Don't glue this. So this can actually swivel around the base. Okay, it then shows you how to loop the string around. So attach to both sides of the natter attaches to this triangular piece here and then over the top and down and to the final pulley and you even get a ladder so if you've got some 148 scale Luftwaffe crew or um, ground crew you could make a nice diorama out of this okay and then we come to and there is only one marking and painting guide for this particular aircraft shows you how to paint the actual launch rail okay and the aircraft itself fairly straightforward not much to it decals go on and she's done so this is Huberi 1945 this is very close to the end they did actually start to build these particular launch platforms, I believe there are three concrete points for the poles still in existence. I have seen photos of them. I can't remember where they are. So they were close to getting these into combat. But luckily the war finished before they had a chance. Okay, so that's the instructions. I'll take the sprues out of the bag and we'll have a look at those. Okay, so let's have a look at the sprues. First up, this is the photo etch. Okay, so as you can tell, these are seat belts for the cockpit and other cockpit fittings. Okay, they're quite fine, nice detail beautiful detail actually and they oop sorry I'm over there slightly so they shouldn't be too hard to actually fit in okay so yep I like that copy detail is a really nice when you use photo etches okay so next up we will have a look at the decals so unfortunately this is a as I said 1993 kit so the white crosses have gone yellow unfortunately but I will have a dig in my spares box I'm pretty sure I've got some white crosses which I can quite easily replace these with all right so that's that oh critical component string okay so there's enough string there to run it up the post and back down again, just like a flagpole. Right, next we will have a look at, All right, this is your clears. So the nose is extremely clear and really nice. Like I said, this is a 93 kit. This is the initial release that I've got here so it makes it 
27 years old um, and they're holding up really well I like that so that's your copy it so next we'll have a look at the aircraft itself okay so there you go that's almost all there is to it tail front part your tails, tail planes, etc. Nose of the aircraft, an alternative nose. So you can have clear or you can have a solid. I would probably go for the clear because then you'll be able to see the rockets. And these are your booster rockets that go on the side. So let's have a closer look. There we go. There's your nose rockets. That's really nice detail. There isn't a great deal of huge like panel lines on the fuselage because this is an all wooden construction okay so it wasn't riveted together it was plywood basically all plywood at the end of the war the Germans were using a lot more plywood in their aircraft tail detail on the ailerons etc not a great deal but then again like I said these were um, plywood. That is your instrument panel and your booster rockets. Okay, so booster rockets, not bad. Instruments, not bad. Good detail all around for little aircraft. Okay, so that's the aircraft. The next. next sprue so there isn't many sprues in this like I said is your launch pole all right four parts glue together top to bottom makes a very tall pole access ladder for the aircraft and these here are your launch mechanism down the bottom of the pole okay so let's have a look there we have it as i said it's just like a telephone pole with climbing angles on it and that's basically how they put it together so bags not being the guy having to climb all the way to the top if the pole gets snagged ladder for access so that's a big ladder i don't know I guess 48 scale it is but reasonable size so yes the pilot had to climb that to get into the cockpit and then the crew had to climb that and you probably have two crew standing on that at the top helping the pilot strap in close the canopy etc okay so isn't a great deal of detail on the mechanism although it is just a girder mechanism so fairly straightforward no bolt detail on that okay so that's that one that's that one and last sprue you actually have two of these okay so we'll have a look at one and it's the base not much detail to that these are the angles that support the side rails which supported the wings okay and that's fairly straightforward fairly easy to understand pulley parts some parts to do with the mechanism that's about it if you were going to use this base which i would i might dress it up seeing as these were basically the poles are stuck in the ground I dress this up as ground footsteps add a bit of foliage little bits and pieces not too much to make it look like it was just being launched straight out of the earth okay 
of the earth. Okay, and that is all there is to it. So that is Dragon's 40A scale BA349A Buckham Natter with the launch tower. Okay, as I said, very old kit. Alright, very old kit, 1993. But from the detail I've seen and the fact it has photo edge, I'm impressed and uh, I may even make this the next kit I build. Okay, so as usual, I hope you got something from it. Um, like I said before, I always get something from these kit reviews, even though they're my kits and I bought them. Um, there's always something in the kit that I didn't realize what it was. So hopefully you feel the same. And until next time, I'll see you later.